Welcome to another edition of this wrap up is really 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 late. Revolutionary set. I came from afar just to say bonsoir to the king Cassetoi, who is the best. Say moi. Bra bra. I am Hercules, more like it up in the lavenous. I heard your mother said, come again. Like a few daughters and horses. Of course, it's hard to have intercourse over force. And I'm just going to grab my laptop. So today I'm going to tell you all the books that I've read since my last wrap up, which was my February wrap up. And even though this is ridiculously late and I only read like, so I feel like I need to disclaim right now, this is the first time in several, several months that I've not been reading like eight to ten books. In this month, I think I've read um, three books so it's really not going great at all and I think that's because spring semester is really rough and also I don't feel like reading as much like I don't know if you've noticed but I took basically all of my books home except for the essentials you can probably determine out of which of these is the essentials but anyway the first book that I read in the month of March is 100 Sideways Miles by Andrew Smith it's about this kid who has epilepsy it's him going through that as well as going through relationship problems as well as going through teenager life-ish problems. That was a really messy synopsis, but basically it's a book about a teenager dude who is just living life and being a teenager as a dude with seizures. I really liked the narrator. I thought it was pretty cool. I liked how he had that silent disease that snuck in there. I don't know why I just dabbed while saying that. I love the writing. I like how Andrew Smith, okay typically if you've read Andrew Smith you know how he writes. He's very vulgar and crude, but this book really wasn't that bad and I felt like in this setting of a book and like with this main character the small twinges of that that you get are realistic so I thought that was pretty cool. For to mention I listened to this on audiobook and I really would recommend that because I thought it was funny, I thought the narrator for that was good, I just thought the pacing of it was good and it was short enough to be able to listen to an audio and that was really enjoyable. The small relationship that develops is really satisfying and it wasn't overdone or anything like that. Overall it was just a really good staple contemporary. Like it wasn't the best thing I've ever read but I would recommend it and it was interesting and it was funny and it was enjoyable at the time. It was a solid four star book. I'm talking a lot. Let's move on. The next book I read was Salt to the Sea by Rudis Apetus. This is a book set in World War II and it follows four different main characters. They're all from different places, all from different backstories, all from different walks of lives and classes and it's about them trying to escape regimes that are after them or not really I've, I said that in a previous video and someone like corrected me which is not technically about that it's just them trying to get on a boat and leave Europe because Europe is obviously terrible during that time and so well actually that's three of the perspectives and the fourth perspective is from a German Nazi so as you can expect he is pretty much the opposite end of that spectrum. I thought this book was really really interesting. I'm not going to speak too much about it because I did review it and I'll link that below if you want to go check that one out but I do really enjoy the four different perspectives even though I typically do not like multi POV books. This one was done really well. I was able to connect with all the characters that had a really good paced plot and it was interesting and I like how Rudis had I like, stop. I like how Ruta doesn't only focus on Germany during World War II because most World War II fiction is just Holocaust based and this is more of like Lithuania and Russia and Poland so that's really interesting to hear about and I like that part of it so once again I know I've been talking a lot but go check out my review if you want to know full in depth thoughts. I gave Salt to the Sea four stars. The third book that I read in March was The Curious Incident of the long title. The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime by Mark Haddon. I also listened to this one on audiobook if you haven't guessed I've been really busy and so I've been liking audiobooks lately except the audiobook I'm listening to is literally for a book that's like 800 pages so it's 34 hours long. I'm suffering. I think I listened to this audiobook in like one or two sittings because I just could not put it down. Actually I think it was a weekend and I had the excuse to be able to do that but still this book follows a boy who is autistic I think or has some sort of mental development disability. His next door neighbor's dog is found murdered in their backyard so he decides that he's going to be the investigator and go figure out what happened to that dog. So it's just him working through that to try and figure out what happened and deal with social situations and learn about himself more along the way. I thought this book was pretty cute. I think it was a really interesting point of view to read from because I think I've read a couple other books where it has people with mental disabilities in it like The Rosie Project and Say What You Will. Those were really interesting to me as well and so I like these books that bring up those topics because it's not very often let me tell you a thing. This book just resonated very okay with me like I enjoyed it at the time. It was something I could go through really quickly. It was really interesting and new to me but I don't particularly think it was the best thing I've ever read. I do like it. I do recommend it but I gave it four stars. Wasn't amazing. Wasn't spectacular. I know there's a musical 
that might be amazing and spectacular, but the book was just sort of good, interesting. So if you're interested in that, you should check it out. It was worth the time to listen to it, which wasn't very much at all, I don't think. Yeah, moving onward. This next book, my friends. <laughs> this is a book I read for class, and so I thought, darn diddly, I'm not gonna like it because we're gonna be talking about it in class, and it's not the book I want to start with, but I read Jane Austen for the first time, and I read Persuasion for the first time, which if you know why I'm frustrated, it's because it's her last book she ever published, and I wanted to read them chronologically, and that kind of ruined it, but those hindrances aside, I loved it. I don't know why I gave it four stars on Goodreads, because I'm such a hoe, but I- hmm. Hmm. This book is about a girl named Anne Elliot, and she and this one dude, Captain Wentworth, had a fling and they were gonna get married, but then people disapproved of that, so she had to break it off with him, and she has regretted it for years, and he's mad at her for years, and finally, eight years later, they meet again, and it's all about sexual tension, is basically. Um, hmm. I loved it. I think I had really high expectations for Austin, but as soon as I knew I was reading this for school, they kind of went down a little bit. They went right back up as soon as I started getting into that book. Jane Austen is genuinely as good as people say she is. It has restored my faith in wanting to read classics, and I think it was so well done, and the writing was so beautiful, and I loved the characters so much in it, and I understood, like, the little symbolisms and all the little imagery. It was so good and it was such a good reading experience despite that I read it for class probably because my professor hardly talked about it but you know so the reason why I put on Goodreads why I took off half a star is because I felt like it was bogged down by too much description and not enough dialogue so I think that's just like the hopeless romantic in me being like but y'all love each other now tell each other and they never I mean no spoilers but I wish there would have been more dialogue in that book because I liked it but I think classics more heavily tend to do paragraphs rather than speech, so I, I'm the minor thing. So I gave it four and a half stars, which means it was really good. I really liked it. If you're hesitating picking up Jane Austen because you think the language is going to be way over your head or you might not like it, definitely give it a try. <laughs> I do not know which one you should start with. I'm not an expert on all the Austen works, but I do think you should at least, at least try it please. Alrighty, the last book is actually a book I DNF'd, so I'm only gonna briefly mention it, but that was Into the, da <clears throat> Into the Dangerous World by Julie Chabarro. This is a book about a girl who is from the 80s, I believe, and she lives in New York City, and she's an artist, but one day her house burns down and kills her father, so they all have to, she, her sister, and her mother all have to go move to New York City and live in a homeless shelter, and it's about her with her family struggling to make ends meet while she's being an artist and she's having to go to this new school for the first time and she's so deranged from society because wherever she lived with her father and her family was like so separate and isolated from actual society that she's having to like come to terms with modern people. It was so bizarre to me. I could not get on the same level with it. The language was not what I was expecting. It just was not good to me. I think mostly because I didn't think that was what I was expecting. I didn't like that it was set in the 80s. It's not a time period I can relate to and I just don't like that time period to read about necessarily. I don't like the language she had with her friends. I don't like that she was an artist. It wasn't that she was an artist, it was that she wanted to be a graffiti artist and I, like, white good girl in me was like, oh no. Little small cultural differences between us made it not that enjoyable to me and you might- the reason I'm mentioning it is because I think some people might genuinely enjoy it. The Goodreads reviews for this are fantastic and I felt sad that I couldn't be on that same enjoyance- enjoyance? Is that a word? Enjoyment level? But unfortunately, no. I gave it one star but of course there's people that love books that I hate so if you think that sounds interesting go for it. It might have just been me. And that concludes everything that I read in the month of March if you're reading And until next time thank you all for watching. Hopefully my subsequent or subsequent one, my f future wrap ups won't be as late. And also I'm kind of wondering do you guys want me to start doing less of monthly wrap-ups and more of recent reads type videos because I feel like that would flow a lot smoother than doing these and having to recollect everything that I've read over the months and try and do a really half-hearted review for them. I don't know. Let me know. I think that's what I would like most, but I don't know if that's what you guys would roll with, so let me know. Okay, <laughs> goodbye. I just waved twice. That was awkward.